Coming up later in this video. So what we're dealing with here, folks, it seems, if this is honest and accurate reporting, then what we're dealing with here is we have this end domestic terrorism rally looming on the horizon for August 17th. And it's going to be a rally that's going to make both the city of Portland and Antifa look bad. It seems like it's gearing up to be that way. The world is looking, the president even tweets about it the morning thereof, but he's been talking about Antifa lately and the failure of, you know, and also Ted Cruz. So everybody's paying attention, right? They know that's happening. I think it was two days before the event. The city officials and the commissioners and all that blah blah blah, they have their little rally, you know, the one where Haley had enough balls to just interrupt when, really, I I don't know, I stand by what she did, I think that they, they should be called out in public when they lie, like that. So you have that, and they all but said, we're all with Antifa, I mean... Somebody said that. Antifa must not be scapegoated. We are in a city that is anti-fascist. So you agree to damaging property and hurting people then, right? Because that's what Antifa does. The police commissioner slash mayor did not object, nor did the police chief, nor did Commissioner Joanne Hardesty. Nobody objected when that woman basically said, we are an Antifa city, we stand with them. Then the very next day, the day before the rally, all of a sudden, online, this Antifa posts some information about a warrant against Joey Gibson for a few minutes, and then it was gone. And that was not supposed to be leaked. Somehow it was accidentally leaked by the police. And this Antifa happened to see it for the few minutes that it was up and shared it. Luis Marquez shared it as well on Twitter. Then all of a sudden it was all hushed up. Gibson calls the police and says, hey, what's this about a warrant? They say, well, we don't know anymore. Reporters call. No, we don't know anything about a warrant. And then they go, oh yeah, Gibson, you know that warrant we told you we didn't have against you? We do, and you gotta come in. <laughs> and he does. What is going on there, folks? What is going on here? This is a tragic clown world thing going on here. It's funny, but it's also really... This is not okay. This is not okay. People, we're going to talk about some suspicious stuff going on between Antifa and the Portland police, or Portland authorities. This is our webpage. These are the main sections. Let's go to... I can access what I'm going to show you through many different ways, but we're going to go through news by subject by date so I can, again, show you. These are arranged by subject alphabetically, and if you click on any of these, you get news and updates and just straight videos and tweets and important stuff about that subject. Let's go down to... We could either go to Patriot Prayer or Patriot Prayer, comma, media lying about. Let's go to the second. You get there either way, though. Okay. Where is it? Something by me. Okay. If you remember this one, folks, police slash Gibson text, the real story, what actually happened. If you remember, folks, this is uh, one of those times where Antifa says, see, the police are really with the Nazis. They're texting Joey Gibson. And then, so I go over it with a fine tooth comb and what I see going on here. Yeah, here's the text, by the way. Ton of information. Read through the actual texts like I do in the video. Here's our video about it right here. All right. Read through the texts yourself or have myself read it to you and comment on it in this video right here. Either way, what's going on there is the cops are keeping tabs on Patriot Prayer through Joey Gibson, and Joey Gibson's, for the most part, being polite, but sometimes telling them, look, I'm not gonna tell you that. You're, you guys kind of dick us over, so, <laughs> you know? So being civil with the cops, but, you know, it's not, see, they're colluding together. And so, you know, a lot of people reported on that and they just didn't actually deep dive into it. So there, there's that one thing, but today we're going to discuss a case where, you know, it's not just that the cops act on orders that are in favor of Antifa. Maybe a little bit more to it than just that. Anyway, let's go back to... what did I want to show you? Oh, well, I guess I should have showed you there, but okay, I'm going to show you through this other way, because it involves... Antifa. 
This article right here from the 24th of August, did the district attorney leak info to Antifa on pro-Trump indictments in Portland by the Gateway Pundit by a Brock Simmons. As the purge of the dissenters continues in Portland, there seems to be conflicting and confusing information regarding the indictments that have been handed down to six pro-Trump activists who are accused of riot class C felony in the aftermath of a brawl that took place on May Day outside of Antifa Hangout, Side of Riot. Just so you're not confused, the name of the place is Side of Riot. It's not an event, it's a place. But there was a riot at Cider Riot. We did articles about this and uh, I collected together a ton of information of videos and stuff from both sides. See the link below for that. Let's examine the matter. Joey Gibson, head of the pro-Trump group Patriot Prayer. By the way, I want to pause here. They keep using the term pro-Trump. They're trying to sell this article by doing so. It's not, it's not that that's wrong. It's just less accurate than just calling them patriots. Joey Gibson, head of the pro-Trump group Patriot Prayer, seems to be the focal target of the investigations and charges. It's fair to say also his right-hand man, Russell Schultz, as well as Mac Lewis, was arrested in this sweep. And you realize what's going on here, folks. What's going on here is this happened right before the end domestic terrorism rally on the 17th. They wanted to get these guys, I guess, I don't know why they didn't do it the day of. I guess they, I don't know. But, I mean, these guys, you know, posted bail and they got out. But, anyway, Gibson tells the Gateway Pundit that he found out about the charges from Antifa posting about it. And not just from Antifa in general. This is... That's Luis Marquez. Louis Marquez. Leftist. At Luis Marquez the Leftist. Sometimes he changes his name. Lately, he's been Leftist. Alright? That reminds me, by the way, folks, I'm collecting information on this guy. We know that um, he has done illegal stuff in other states and he may have warrants out for these things. I need concrete information only, please, though. You know, say links, documents, videos, something like that. Not not just hearsay. Um, unless you think that hearsay really can lead to something concrete, all right? But just uh, claims and hearsay, really, I just don't have the time. Contact information below, by the way. So we can use information on that guy for stuff, for, you know, just, I'll tell you in the future. Gibson tells the Gateway Pundit that he found out about the charges from Antifa posting about it. Quote, there was a glitch in the system that revealed secret and sealed case information. Antifa got a hold of it and posted about it. Then five minutes later, it was gone. I called in to ask about it and they said there was no warrant. A reporter called the DA to ask about it and the DA said he couldn't comment. The reporter was dumbfounded and had never seen something like this before. He was hesitant to run the story because he couldn't confirm anything. Unquote. The reporter was able to confirm the existence of a warrant through a detective at the Portland Police Bureau. Let's see where this leads. Unfortunately, this is just a screenshot. And you know, folks, screenshots can be faked. I'm not saying the Gateway Pundit would do that, necessarily. I don't think they would. Uh, but it just really archived the link and put the link there. So everyone knows that it's real. I mean, this is something that was there for a few minutes. Somebody took a screenshot. Be great if they would have grabbed the URL and archived that, but anyway, enough bitching from me. Right? I mean, listen to me go. Right? All right, so you can see right here, Louis Marquez is retweeting this from A It Mech Intensified. And that person tweeted, Joey Gibson and Russell Schultz have warrants for rioting, for attacking Siderite May 1st. What was that Russell said? Quote, he broke the law, now he does the time, unquote, lol. Well, yeah, except that they didn't actually break the law. They just stood there. Hey, folks, look, this is what they're talking about. This is, all right. <laughs> this is what they did that was so bad. So as you can see, before I even get to the sidewalk, the customers are already coming up and getting in my face. That's not a self-defense. They're trying to stop me from existing on the side. All right, so that's Joey Gibson there. That's Russell Schultz there. Let's see the crimes they committed. There's a public sidewalk. There's a public sidewalk. Hey, there's Antifa wall right here. Check it out. Look, look, look. Look, Antifa wall. Look, look, look. Look, Antifa wall. There's a public sidewalk. There's a public sidewalk. There's a public sidewalk. Hey, hey, hey. Look, look, look. Look, Antifa wall. 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 Look,
so angry. Check it out. Why are you angry? Go ahead, Joey. Look at the mask. Mask. Look at the mask. Mask. Right here, bitch. How do you drink beer? Do it. Do it. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. So here you can hear him yelling at me. Did I have to go home? That I have to leave? And so I say, simply say, just do something. I mean, you can't force me to leave. This is a public sidewalk. And then they return the favor by spitting on my arm. Is that out of self-defense? Is that why, Mr. Lawyer, why they spit on me? Because it was an act of self-defense? Look at it. Yeah, spit on me. Spit on me. Spit on me. Spit on me. Yeah. Let's be honest, if this were any other bar in the United States of America, they would have been kicked out already. The security should have already stepped in, ownership should have already stepped in and taken care of this situation. There's no reason why she should have spit in our faces, there's no reason why she should have knocked my phone out of my hand, and there's no way that she did that out of self-defense, and I cannot wait for them to try to argue this in the court of law. As you can see right here, I'm just sitting here having a conversation with a girl on a beautiful May Day and they attack me. There's no way that that macing, that pepper spray on me from the property of Cider Riot onto me, onto a public sidewalk, there's no way that is justified through self-defense. All right, so there you go. The article continues. So did the Antifa activist just happen to be looking on the site, searching for Joey's name, when the data just happened to accidentally get made public? Or did someone inside the DA's office tip them off? It's odd that they told Joey Gibson there was no warrant because it turned out there was one and that charges were being filed for riot. Again, folks, as they quoted, the quote from Joey Gibson, they had him saying that he called and said, hey, what is this about? And they said, no, there's no warrant. Then they're like, oh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Our bad. And it just happens to be the day before the end domestic terrorism rally. Yeah, you and Mac Lewis and your friend Russell Schultz. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And other people too. Just a coincidence. Yeah, just like it was a coincidence that the Antifa account just happened to see us accidentally post that for a couple of minutes. Yeah. It's all an accident. No collusion here. No conspiracy here. Nothing to see here. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the way that the police have their hands handcuffed by the police commissioner who happens to be the mayor. No conflict of interest there. The guy who won't even say Antifa out loud. The guy who held a rally two days before the end domestic terrorism rally basically to say that we are a city of Antifa and we're with them. Yeah, that was right there beside the mayor. Okay, he didn't say those words himself, but he stood there or he sat there or whatever, <laughs> you know, probably nodding his head. Okay, as these people cheer, what is going on here, folks? Even with President Trump that morning tweeting about how we're watching what's going to be going on at this rally, we're watching how Portland police handle it this time around with the assistance of the feds, even with that going on, there were still incidents of crowds that should have been trailed by police attacking people and, you know, buses and all that. Utter failure, even with the feds in the world and the media looking at it. The president, so on. Failure. And that's out on the streets, publicly. We can surmise what's going on on the other side, behind the scenes. When crap like this happens, what the damn hell? And need I remind you that, you know, Luis Marquez, he's been arrested many, many times. He just gets released, catch and release, catch and release, catch and release. Probably does go fund me, so I'm not sure about that, but I wouldn't be surprised. These people are getting slaps on the wrist or less. <laughs> and then this happens. Oh, okay. What is going on here, folks? This is really weird. You know, I gotta say, I think 
uh, at, uh, at my age, I'm starting to think that maybe my whole life I've poo-pooed conspiracy theories a little bit too much. Just a little bit. I'm not saying it's all true, it's all true. But I'm like, now I'm thinking, if somebody else were to tell me what I'm telling people on this channel about Portland and the politics and about Berkeley and about what you found out, Tabby, about the mayor of Berkeley and other politicians there, about how close they are with Antifa, if somebody else were to tell me about this, I would be like, uh, yeah, sure, okay, I'm gonna just change the channel. Turn the frogs gay, right? Sure. <laughs> you know, lizard people, right? Hollow Earth, huh? <laughs> All right, Flat Earth, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, you know, and then go watch something else. Unless, you know, they really had all the proof, like we do, in which case I would be riveted. But this really is goddamn weird. It seems like a historical fiction plot, alternate history plot line, you know, for some sort of science fiction novel or something, or a movie or series. It's crazy. It's goddamn crazy. So, where were we? It's odd that they told Joey Gibson there was no warrant because it turned out there was one and charges were being filed for right. Gibson turned himself in on Friday, August 16th, then self-bailed out on $500. Deputy District Attorney Bradley Calbaugh, I hope I'm saying that correctly, had motion to seal the arrest warrants affidavits and the arrest warrants themselves on August 12th, before any of the defendants even knew they were being charged with the crime. Before any indictment was found, before any witnesses had been ID, before any quote-unquote victims came forward, before a grand jury convened to take up the matter. So the Gateway Pundit provides some copies of the court documents, and you can zoom in really close. Hm. They have Gibson down as Asian for race, because there probably is no Asian slash Caucasian, I guess. So anyway, there you go. That's for Russell Schultz. There's one for Mac Lewis now. It continues, not a single Antifa terrorist has been charged with anything from this side of riot brawl despite at least two people attempting to make police reports after being attacked by Antifa. One was a student filmmaker who had his camera broken and was assaulted and pinned to the ground while they poured beer on him. The other was Andy No, who had to shout from the rooftops to get the police to acknowledge that he wanted to make a report. And folks, this happens all the time. Speaking of Mac Lewis, one of the guys that was arrested, same time that they arrested Russell and Joey Gibson. You may have seen in a form of video, a couple, it was about a week or a week and a half ago. He was chased down the street with a knife-wielding Antifa. The cops show up minutes later. They tell the cops, look, he was chased by the person with the knife. We know where the person went. They're just over here and through this fence and in, in this door or whatever. And the police didn't do anything about it. They didn't do anything about it. That was attempted murder or whatever. They didn't care. Yeah. They will go out of their way to avoid it. <sighs> yeah, I'm so frustrated. I'm just going to move on. Andy knows tweet. Are you kidding me? Do you not arrest violent people so then you can claim it was peaceful? There was a riot outside the side of riot. I was attacked point blank with pepper spray. A student journalist from Oregon State had his camera smashed and destroyed. Where are you? And that was May 1st, 1149 p.m. I'm going to skip over some of the stuff. You can, of course, access that through the links I give you in the description below. The article continues, Additionally, not a single Antifa terrorist has been ID'd or charged with the attack on Andy Noe on June 29th, which happened literally right out front of the police headquarters, with no police officers anywhere, as hundreds of people were marching in the streets. In this video from Stumptown Matters, you can clearly see several Antifa terrorists chasing down Gibson and crew and assaulting the videographer with a baton while others threaten him with some sort of shank and brass knuckles. We'll see some of that. Folks, I would feel intellectually dishonest if I skip over something that happens right before they want you to play the video. In other words, if you go to the Gateway Pundit article and you scroll down and you play this video, it doesn't play at the beginning. It plays at 9 minutes and 5 seconds, you can see. And this is when Antifa are basically uh, freaking out, basically, that you leave or we'll clock you over the head. 
And I have to show you why that is. There's a whole thing that happens that day. In summary, basically, they show up, Joey Gibson in the front, shows up, Mac Lewis right behind him, and stand there on the public sidewalk and say, well, what are you going to do about it? Because, you know, this is a public sidewalk, we're allowed to be anywhere, and if you think you're going to have this little commie antifa nest right here where other people are now allowed to walk down the street you're wrong because that's not how this works in america okay so then they assault joey gibson they assault other people lots of yelling pushing and shoving then both sides decide they were going to have a mono a mono fight one man from either side fight they do fight in the middle of the street then after the fight the guy behind the youtube channel airliner world and more decides he's not satisfied he wants to fight them nobody wants to fight him so he starts yelling you won't fight a black man you won't fight a black man and then something happens and tabby's gonna try to help us figure it out it's very hard to see what happens because it happens off camera on about three or four different people's youtube videos but backing up to about 8 35 this guy right here, Airline the World and More, he wants to fight. Joey Gibson's trying to pull him away. They just want to leave at this point because everybody, all the Patriots want to leave at this point. He's going with them, not that he's with their group, but if he doesn't leave, he would be in great danger if he doesn't go with them. Alright, now she's coming in to get him. By the way, this happens, uh, I think, after he hits her. We'll see from other angles. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so you don't see it, but you see her fall right there. See that again? In this news clip, this either starts right before the person gets knocked out, I'm not sure. Let's see if we can... Let's see here. It's really hard to see. Alright, folks, what's going on here? Now you can see the baton there. Yeah, but did you see the hit? Yes. Okay, let me see. Let me back up. And there's the spray. Now watch for the guy who has the baton. He'll be there sort of middle right. And then you'll see the baton come out like. Oops, I missed it. Damn it. It's there. It's really quick. It's there though. After the spray, huh? Yeah. There. Oh, shit. Okay, he's, okay it's during the spray. So he's right oh, okay, there, yeah, yeah. Right, in right there. Those two silhouetted dudes. Alright, folks, I'm gonna have to slow this down for you. Here we go. Good eye, Tabby. Thank you for that. Okay. All right, folks. And uh, now let's watch it from this angle. Well, you don't really see it in this angle. Wait, we already you watched this. You kind of do. You kind of do. Go ahead and play it. Okay, you see that guy? He already went in there and with a small hit. Over on the left there. The guy in the helmet has already gone in and yeah. saw his elbow move real quick. Alright, let's do that again. That's where he lunged, that's where he hit. Spinning his torso. I'm yep. Hitting. Foot back. That foot that's on the back yeah. swings towards the front. Walk. Yeah, it's because he's hand. doing a whole round thing. Yeah. So, yeah. See, the guy in the striped shirt, he only got her that one time. Yeah, with and his hands. They tried to get him, and they kept him back from her, but they didn't notice Mr. Baton over there, who got her pretty good. He—that's an overhand hit. Yeah. 
And she's a little shorter than him, so it was either that she either took it in the head or shoulder. And his right foot swings with his right hand from yeah. the back position to the forward position. All right, now, folks, watch Joey Gibson's body language towards the guy with the baton here who hit her and this guy who hit her. Watch here. See, he, yeah, he's right there. He's pushing him back specifically. He's pushing him back. You can see he's angry. Yeah, because this is not supposed to happen. They're not supposed to descend into the madness of those that they don't like. Yeah. And it's right about here is where the Gateway Pundit wants you to start watching. And so that would mean that this guy right here has to be Stumptown Matters. You can see the camera right there. So he's in the right position. It would have to be him. All right, folks, now we're going to back up a little bit. I want to show you that little incident from Joey Gibson's own camera and listen to what he says. Listen to him try to stop the guy from wanting to fight and then listen after the baton comes out and the girl gets knocked out. Listen to what Joey Gibson has to say about it. And he's not exactly happy. Dude, come on. At least they fall like men. For once, they fall like men. Oh, jeez. Hey, there's another time for that. No one wants to fight you anyways. What? No one wants to fight you. You won't fight me. Come on. Dude, tonight was good. Hey, I promise you tonight was good. You won't fight a black guy. Tonight was good, I promise you. What? Who? What? Come on. Hey! Hey, we gotta go! Come on! We gotta go! No, no, no! We had a deal! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! 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 I'm Get the fuck out! Get out! Get out! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fall back! I'm sorry. Get the fuck out of here! Fall back! Fall back! I need it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They dropped him! Grab Demi! Go! Get the fuck out, Joey! Let's go! Get out! Shut the fuck up! Shut up! What are you fucking doing? Don't run, don't run, don't run. What are you doing? Don't run. What's your deal? These people come Why'd you do that? I'm like fucking you home. In a girl's house, though? She didn't do it. She's just a girl. All what are you doing, say. man? Take a hard run. It's not okay. It's I was not like, okay. I just lost my home because of them. It's not okay. She didn't do anything to you, man. God damn it, they're all the fucking same. Let's go. She didn't do anything to you. We just escalated everything. What's up, Joey? We had two men that fought like men. David! And then you get in her face and you punch her and you push her. Well, I didn't punch your place. I punched him back. Everything was de escalated, man. I, pu I pushed her We had two back. men fight for one another. They faced each other. And you're going to decide the entire thing over that? Why are you going to push a girl? A girl that's not even masked. A girl that we've never even seen before. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why you're gonna. Oh, we don't need an iPhone. You don't need to hit me in my fucking foot with a rock. I gave someone a green iPhone. 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 Well, you did a good job tonight. Now, at this point, listen to what these guys say about the cops. Police didn't show up on purpose. Who the fuck's not true? They got the call. They, just, they chose not Sorry, to show up. Down. All right, let's hear that one more time. Police didn't show up on purpose. Who the fuck's not true? They got the call. They, just, they chose not Sorry, to show up. Sorry, let you down, guys. You didn't let us down because you fucking stood up, dude. Yeah, dude. It's not about... It's about people who actually step in the ring. That's all that matters. Everyone wants to sit outside and judge everyone else who actually step in the ring. Yeah, you stepped in the you ring. Stepped in the ring. And it de-escalated everything too, man. There was a truce that was built from that fight. And then Dimitri. Yeah, I know. Well, fuck, I didn't hit the Alright, right there is where Joey Gibson's video ends. Okay, everyone? Alright, let's move on.
You see this guy in the red shirt here, folks? He is another one of those YouTubers who just stands there and films. And there's a lot of people who just know that if they follow the Patriots around, they're not going to get attacked by the Patriots. But if they follow Antifa around, they're going to get attacked by Antifa, no matter what their politics are, because they're filming. That's just how it is. Right. The reason why I'm mentioning them is uh, you might want to read more into this article, folks, because at a certain point, I think down here, no, up there, I already skipped over this, folks. That is the guy who wrote, or allegedly wrote this post, Justin Chance Allen. And he's basically saying, well, okay, we're going to go into this now, folks. I'm going to keep it short, but get this tabby. Okay. He, he, uh, he's involved in this case. And so he posted this on Facebook recently. Oh, and by the way, whoever posted this is on their friends list. By this little icon right here, that means it's not a public post. Yeah. But, hey, I'm not doxing anything. This has already been made public. Turns out it won't be anonymous, but hopefully efforts will lead to the prosecution of numerous, he means numerous, bad actors who have come into town to cause chaos and hurt people. Come into town. This is starting to sound like a certain familiar rhetoric here. Going to be at a grand jury tomorrow morning telling my story for the first time semi-publicly, and as soon as the defense gets discovery, then Patriot Prayer and the other right-wing nuts that come to fight will know I've been infiltrating them. He means them. They'll know I'm their enemy. I'm a little afraid and embarrassed for separate reasons, but this is good. It's a chance to make the two and a half years I've been infiltrating these assholes worth it in a very real sense. Blargle, flaggle, flucking. I wanted to get through this without anyone knowing like my name. His brain had an acid flashback all of a sudden. His gerbil, garbal, like, dude, what? I think that's just him trying to curse. Now, in a creative way. Now, okay, hold on a second. If it is true that this guy has infiltrated them for two and a half years and that, you know, they're bad in some way, I challenge this guy to show the worst. Because surely if he's been filming and infiltrating them for two and a half years, he had to have seen their secret meetings with their white hoods on and their sea kyles and the burnings of the cross and their Nazi tattoos that you never get to see. Yeah. I challenge this guy to show the worst that he's got on film. <laughs> I will put it on my YouTube channel. I don't care how bad it makes anybody look. I will put it on my YouTube channel as long as it's not pornographic, you know. Uh, what I'm saying is this guy's full of shit. Oh, yeah. This guy's trying to make it seem like he uh, he's in some sort of danger when they find out. Bullshit! When have they ever, ever targeted some sort of camera person or reporter and then waited for the right time at the right rally and snuck up behind him and hit him over the head with a bike lock or whatever it is? When have they ever done that? They don't. They just don't do that. Okay, that's a bunch of bullshit. All right, so I wasn't going to go into that, but there, I went into that. All right. Well, anyway, moving on from where we were. All right, folks, so now I've told you, and I feel a lot better having told you about what happened, because, you know, it's important to criticize these things. Props to Joey Gibson and other people for calling out the people who did that thing. I mean, that was just not necessary. I don't think it was black and white. I think it's a gray area, but... It is important for me to tell you these things. And by the way, folks, I have a ton of information and videos of that day. You can see them on your screen right now. It's another one of those things that I make available for you on our webpage. You just have to go through the uh, listing through history. So if you think things are being taken out of context or whatever, well, you could see a lot more video from different angles and different sources, both left and right and otherwise. I arranged it all for you. See the links below. The gateway pundit continues, but those are the good guys, according to the police and the district attorneys, the victims. No charges for any of them. In fairness, though, the Portland quote-unquote police, <laughs> I like how they put quotes around police, it's appropriate, actually are trying to identify a whole two of them. And there you go. That's from the Portland police. And that's the one that Andy No was tweeting about as well. They're like, yeah, you know, we'll give them a little, you know, token here or there, a little scapegoating. We got two of them. The two we don't really like so much. The article continues. Gibson tells the gateway pointer that he hasn't even seen any of the documents on his case. His next court date is Tuesday, August 27th, 2 10 p.m. Same day of the rally that I told you about in our last video for an arraignment on the indictment. Apparently, side or right weren't even the ones who called the police about the brawl. It was a neighbor. Quote, I feel like people are awakening to the deep corruption, unquote, Gibson says. Quote, with Ted Wheeler as the police commissioner, it's a conflict of interest. Mm-hmm. 
The DA doesn't charge Antifa but charges other people for doing less. This is an act of control. Unquote. When asked if he thinks the charges will eventually be dropped, Gibson says, quote, It depends how stupid they are. I won't plead. This will be a waste of their resources. It's only a win for them if I don't fight back. Unquote. By the way, yeah, conflict of interest. So, folks, in Portland, the mayor is also the police commissioner. The head of the Portland Police Association, Daryl Turner, has been for maybe a year and a half, two years now, saying that the police commissioner, in other words, the mayor, Ted Wheeler, handcuffs them and won't let them do their job when it comes to Antifa. The article continues. Here are some of the other documents that have been obtained by the Gateway Pundit, and you can again see that if you want to. We're going to scroll past those. And the article concludes, We encourage our readers to save these images in case we are ordered to remove them. And indeed, I, I do. I save these things. I have all these things on file and stuff like that. I will write a book or two about this, folks, and I hope, uh, I hope you're interested in that. It would have to be an electronic book, by the way, because you know me, I'm not going to just write words on a page. I'm going to put links to prove everything, because otherwise, why do it, right? What's the point if you can't prove everything? It's just another narrative, right? So what we're dealing with here, folks, it seems, if this is honest and accurate reporting, then what we're dealing with here is we have this end domestic terrorism rally looming on the horizon for August 17th. And it's going to be a rally that's going to make both the city of Portland and Antifa look bad. It seems like it's gearing up to be that way. The world is looking. The president even tweets about it the morning thereof, but he's been talking about Antifa lately and the failure of, you know, and also Ted Cruz. So everybody's paying attention, right? They know that's happening. I think it was two days before the event. The city officials and the commissioners and all that blah blah blah, they have their little rally, you know, the one where Haley had enough balls to just interrupt when, really, I I don't know, I stand by what she did, I think that they, they should be called out in public when they lie, like that. So you have that, and they all but said, we're all with Antifa, I mean... Somebody said that. Antifa must not be scapegoated. We are in a city that is anti-fascist. So you agree to damaging property and hurting people then, right? Because that's what Antifa does. The police commissioner slash mayor did not object, nor did the police chief, nor did Commissioner Joanne Hardesty. Nobody objected when that woman basically said, we are an Antifa city, we stand with them. Then the very next day, the day before the rally, all of a sudden, online, this Antifa posts some information about a warrant against Joey Gibson for a few minutes, and then it was gone. And that was not supposed to be leaked. Somehow it was accidentally leaked by the police. And this Antifa happened to see it for the few minutes that it was up and shared it. Luis Marquez shared it as well on Twitter. Then all of a sudden it was all hushed up. Gibson calls the police and says, hey, what's this about a warrant? They say, well, we don't know anymore. Reporters call. No, we don't know anything about a warrant. Then they go, oh yeah, Gibson, you know that warrant we told you we didn't have against you? We do, and you gotta come in. <laughs> and he does. What is going on there, folks? What is going on here? This is a tragic clown world thing going on here. It's funny, but it's also really... This is not okay. This is not okay. Uh, in closing, folks, again... I keep calling him Louis Marquez, I mean Louis Marquez. Louis Enrique Marquez. We need information, concrete information. Please send it to me in the contact information below. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I want to tell you to go to BitChute to replace YouTube because YouTube won't let us get away with this for a long time. BitChute is like YouTube without the censorship. All right, folks, so. Don't forget the subscribe star, damn it. All right. I don't like mentioning this, folks, but you know what Patreon is. It's a way to pay content creators. Scroll down. I guess see the first link below for that. Thank you, Tabby, for reminding me. Yeah. I don't like asking people for money, but we certainly could use it. I work my ass off, and actually, Tabby does a lot more physical work than me sometimes because I'm doing this work while she's doing work to keep our business going. All right, folks, enough blah, blah, blah for me. If you want to give us money, that would be great. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Liberty, strength, honor, integrity, honesty, justice, good humor, truth, and love.